Greetings, I'm Solid Scully, and welcome back to the Kingdom Hearts 2 commentary, where it seems the date escape is currently under threat by the Hordle. Gorge! Hope Tron's okay! Me too. Let's head for the game grid. Great! The terminal works! Let's go! So, Hofsky would go see to rescue Tron, who seems to be in a bit of a pickle in the light cycle area. Uh, which, I mean, you can do the minigame of, you know, light cycling again, it's just not gonna be for a while. So in the meantime, let's cut back to Final Fantasy Disney... stuff. Finished? Would be, if it weren't for the old loon's magic. Old loon, you say? I'm trying to work here! <laughs> I'll show you who's old! Done! Yeah! There you go, Leon. One homemade program. A loony wizard special. This had better work. I'm off. Be on your guard. Careful! Watch out! Ah! Hold on! Oh dear. Well, nothing changes. Anyway, what we're basically going to be doing throughout the rest of, well, the Tron World, I mean, apart from the fact that, you know, we're finishing this world of good and proper, is that, yeah, compared to the last visit where we were just trying to find out what the Door to Darkness password was for Ansem's security system, here on the other hand, well... Again, I'm assuming that there was a final confrontation between Sock and the MCP in the movie. It's just that this time around it's also, well, I don't know, kind of concluding the arc and again continuing the rather sweet friendship between Sora and Tron. Like again, I'm probably sure I pointed this out beforehand, but I don't know, like I mean the a computerized bond between the, you know, digital Tron and human Sora, it's uh, kind of sweet. I don't know, just the way they sort of play off each other and their bizarre idiosyncrasies is, I don't know, amusing to me. It's like even something digital can have a heart. But yeah, the main precipice of what we're going to be doing in the meantime is, and again, part of the reason why, uh, you know, we have all that cut back between, you know, Squall and the Hollow Burst and Restoration Committee, and what Sora's doing inside here is, well, yeah, we got to restore Tron's original functions. Get him back to being combat capable. Well, I mean, he is combat capable, but uh, with more of his original functions, we actually get to use his limit break. Unless we could use it before. I can't quite remember. I've been forgetting previous parts because it's been a fair couple of months since I last saw it. Thank Nomine. Uh, but in the meantime, though, and again, what does make this world at least slightly more uh, exciting compared to the likes of Pride Lands or whatever else is that... Yeah, we are actually going to be exploring new areas of, well, space paranoids. So again, you're seeing new vistas and, uh, you know, you're going to be finishing things off, so... Yeah. And I suppose it also helps that, again, compared to anything else, the fact that Tron, at least in the Kingdom Hearts sense, has a little bit more to do with Hollow Bastion in and of itself, rather than any other Disney world that is segregated, it does help a little bit more and, you know, at least tying into what's going on, and to be honest, I kind of like that. I mean, granted, I do understand why they don't do that for every World in the Kingdom Hearts universe, since, again, playing through the movie is Sora is part of the appeal, at least for some people who don't really care about the Square enix -y sort of storytelling, but... I don't know, like, I mean, it's fun when you have this level of interaction between Kingdom hearts and stuff and the disney and stuff. Ian. Oh, dear. By the way, those Heartless become rather annoying by the time you get to the Cavern of Remembrance, but, uh, it's time to transform into anti-form Thora. And yeah, as you can see, his Heartless symbol is imprinted onto his, uh, digital outfit. 
And yeah, as I've uh, pointed out before, and will point out again to pad out for time, yeah, your strength remains just as static now as uh, you were when you went to the first world. That is to say, Beast Castle, or I think the Land of Dragons? But anyway... more violence. Although I do, although I will say, like, I mean, as a fan of Final Fantasy VIII, I love the fact that this game gives Squall a fair bit to do in a couple of cool action scenes. I don't know, this, this is one of my few joys in life. But anyway, oh yeah, I guess you do get it before you restore his functions. Unless we restore them beforehand in the previous... Whatever, I'm kind of forgetting myself here, but... Eh, whatever. Running executable. Hacking our subnets. Install more firewalls. Hex Matrix Adapter 747. Yeah, to be honest, I kind of got nothing. I'm pretty sure you are restoring more of Tron's functions. I guess maybe I forgot what point you activated the Luma Break, which is the previous part. This indeed, viewers, is as, as much a lonely experience for me as it is for you. Although, considering the fact that you can kind of watch these parts in real time, you probably already had more of this remembered more than me. Because my memory is... shoddy. Yeah, but anyway, those particular Heartless, the... the octopus walkers... yeah. Again, they have some pretty annoying attacks and they become a much bigger pain in the ass in a... well, later on in the game. Warning! User control is terminated indefinitely! No good. Leon, let me try. This is your final warning. Stop at once. Bon appetit. Don't talk with your mouth full. What? What are you loading? Oh, see he, Aerith being that womanly woman that we all know and love. What a sweet pea. Nothing's come in yet. Leon! Come on! There! All right! What's it like? This is very strange. That's more than spy trick. Huh? There's a power booster for me. And flight routines for the solar sailor. Meaning we're set? Well, like you users say, we won't know till we give it a try. We'll need a sailor to reach the MCP, so let's get to the simulation hangar. Oh yeah, let's do it. And there we go, we now have a new ability. But what do we unlock? Oh yeah, we basically unlocked a couple of extra stuff for him. Huh, that wasn't quite as impressive as I thought it was going to be. Oh well. So uh, I suppose to kind of pad out the runtime a little bit more before we get to here on the Solar Sailor, which is pretty much on the other side of the complex here. Yeah, some stuff I was researching about Tron were, uh, again, Tron itself was, and again, I don't know if I brought this up beforehand, so I apologize for the redundancy, but yeah, Tron apparently came out during that brief tenure of Disney, 
I don't know if they call it the Dark Ages or perhaps like the less goodish age because Disney always, you know, sold, obviously. But yeah, this pretty much came out in the period between Walt Disney's death and the Disney Renaissance of like the late 80s to I think early 2000s, where basically uh, Disney was kind of in a fit trying to find stuff that would be successful, especially with a lot of their animators leaving, I believe. So yeah, Tron was basically an attempt to kind of throw something at the wall and see what stuck. And again, it was also marking one of their earlier ventures into live action. Which, I mean, uh, again, it was initially going to be... T I think Tron was initially going to be a 2D animated movie, but uh, proved to be a bit too expensive, which is kind of laughable nowadays, considering the vast pools of money that Disney has, but, you know, I mean, I guess we were up for tough times back in the 80s, so... Who knows? But, I mean, it, it, even still, like, I mean, Tron itself didn't really get a lot of critical acclaim until much later on in its lifespan. A bit of that is, of course, attributed to Kingdom Hearts 2. Because again, it had been 20 years since people had seen the movie, and I guess Kingdom Hearts 2 left such a strong impression on a lot of people, that again, it did, as I mentioned beforehand, it did influence people to create Tron Legacy, which didn't do so well, and now Tron's basically gone back to sleep as a franchise. That was fun. got to keep a lookout. The MCP isn't going to just let us waltz in. This minigame has always kind of made me a bit confused. Like, again, we have to make sure- we have to kill enough enemies so that they don't weigh down the solar sailor and make it stop, I guess, but... Uh, first of all, some of the enemies are hovering above the Solar Sailor and therefore should have no effect. And then there's also, like, the fact that we're in a computer program which shouldn't have any weight or physics engine at all? I mean, I, I guess it would, considering the fact that Sora is walking around normally, there has to be some sort of gravity and atmosphere, even if artificial, so really, what's going on? Ugh, whatever. It's basically just another pish minigame where we have a bunch of motorbugs, roller coasters, just buggering about. Given it all this... I don't know. Uh, I've really got nothing to say about this minigame, it's just... It just is. And... You know, we need a set piece. And I will say, actually, like, talking about the backgrounds for a bit... Again, while it is obviously trying to recreate, you know, that sort of, like, 8-bit sort of computery kind of aesthetic, uh... Quite a nice use of lighting. The digital clouds actually look kind of nice, and, uh... Yeah. Credit to the art designers, it's actually quite amazing how, like, a staunch use of colour usage, you know, grid lines and... Well, again, 8-bit looking clouds can actually create some very beautiful vistas. Lick, lick, lick. Anyway, we're pretty much gonna end this right now. Come on, Stitch. Musical duet? Oh, no, wait, we're just gonna shoot things. Yeah, teamwork. Woohoo! The MCP is straight ahead. Time to settle things for good. Yeah, we'll never see them again. Take them down, woohoo. Preamble speech before we finally get to the last confrontation. But before we do all that, it's time for more item management and uh, sorting shit out. The game. But yeah, this is pretty much the final area. Uh, well, I mean, again, it's it's at least something new, which I can appreciate. And I mean, plus the Solar Sailor section, despite being a bit of a pish minigame, well, 
I mean, it's over with relatively quickly. By the way, we also got Cosmic Arts, which, uh, again, unless you're planning on going through some of the synthesis stuff, is actually one of the more powerful things in the game that you can equip, so, uh, yeah, like, I mean, again, even if you choose not to indulge in any of the synthesis stuff, uh, by proxy of finding some item drops or, you know, searching around through treasure chests, again, you can still get pretty beefed up towards the end of the game, which, again, options. I like that in a game. You're rewarded for uh, doing the grinding work and getting the synthesizers, like the 80s music. Or, you know, you can just find stuff around, like a treasure hunter. Actually, I just realized now that Disney also owns Indiana Jones. It does make me wonder for Kingdom Hearts 4, perhaps. I mean, uh, Indiana Jones 5 is still in production, I think. So... Possibly for a spin-off, like, uh, Union Cross, Missing Link, Dark Matter, whatever. Who was that? Sark, the MCP's number two. Tenacious little bugs. Your time is up. Prepare for de-resolution. Oh no. Sock. He's going to make us pixelated. No. Yeah, but anyway, uh Sock in his first phase is really it's just kind of no pish, really. Again, deflect his little disc attack back at him and uh just smack him about. And, uh, yeah, for those of you wondering, no, they didn't get the original actor, uh, Sark back for the movie. It's not David Warner who, I believe, voiced both him and the MCP, but... Yeah, I believe it's Corey Burton doing the voice. So, uh, yeah, and I mean, to be honest, you can kind of tell, because Corey Burton does have a range of very... I don't want to say similar sounding voices, but... You can kind of tell when it's him, at least when he's filling in for, you know, major actors. I mean, it still gets the impersonations pretty spot on, though, so, uh... You know, the man more than owns his pennies. Wee, genie face. You're very persistent, Tron. I'm also better than you. Uh, we would have made a great team. Now for the MCP. This thing is the MCP? That's it. Ugly, isn't it? Tron, don't you understand? We don't need users. We've advanced. They're superfluous. Be a part of me, and together the world will be ours to control. MCP, you still don't get it, do you? Sark! Sark! All my functions are now yours! God! It's Gojira! Actually, has there ever been a digital kaiju? I mean, I'm sure there probably has in the several years that giant rubber-suited monster movies have been a thing, but... I'm curious, actually, is there a kaiju that's actually a computer program? Or at least something that's made out of data? Hmm. Curious. Anyway, this battle will be twofold! Well, yeah. Limit break. <laughs> that actually was nicely timed. But yeah, basically, your main uh, concern isn't Sark himself, it's the MCP. Uh, you gotta break through his little shield defenses in order to use both you and Tron's limit break to basically just shoot a giant fuck off laser and take down the MCP that way. Sark is basically just more of an annoyance, really. Again, and your biggest problem is, well, Sark isn't really the main threat, it's mainly the MCP who, again, will basically rotate a shield walls because, again, these shields break in individual pieces. 
you know, like we're playing a game of Duel Masters here, and you gotta break all five shields, and then launch a funnel attack with Bullshock Dragon to Domida. But yeah, these shields, I believe, require a full combo in order to break, and, uh, yeah. Part of the reason why the use a full combo before you completely destroy a thing can be a bit of a pain in the ass and backfire on you. I mean, again, it's not debilitating because, because all it really does is just, I don't know, sort of prolong the boredom, really. And, uh, yeah, I probably should have, uh, <laughs> not left Tron's Limit Break to the triangle button. Uh, but whatever, really. Again, sometimes it will stop, and I recommend doing your combos on the ground, although it does become a bit of a pain in the ass when you're trying to attack one specific shield point, but then you wind up attacking two. Like that. So, again, positioning yourself can be a bit of a pain in the ass. But uh, there you go. Here's what you gotta do. Yes! Eat laser, asshole! Of course, eventually the MCP will get wise to you and do his little shield rotations, bat your way and shoot back fuck off laser beams at you. And that's pretty much all she wrote. The rest of the boss fighters basically just doing the same thing and just trying to stun Sark, who will eventually regenerate and just go, Is that the best a user can do? Computery terms. Whatever. Uh, we have set us up the bomb, or whatever the fuck that thing was. Uh, but anyway, to kind of while away the wee hours as we try and take down the MCP's defenses, and then we can't because we have a summon out, and then it fucks us off. Sorry, Stitch. Oh yeah, I th <laughs> Yeah, this is also another one of Stitch's functions that I mentioned before. He can summon health balls. Anyway, trivia time. Uh, for both, um, the original voice of, uh, the MCP and Sark, David Warner, uh, the late David Warner, I should say, because I just learned that he died, uh, not too long ago. Rest in peace, my good man. Uh, but anyway, like, I also learned that, uh, on top of being the voice of both, uh, Sark and the MCP, uh, David Warner was also one of the original choices for uh, Freddy Krueger, and, uh, as you're going to see here, it even got to as far as the point where they actually did a couple of makeup tests on him. I can't quite remember why exactly he pulled out of the projects. Uh, again, that's kind of eluding me at the moment. Uh, but yeah, sadly, no David Warner, and uh, eventually we've got Robert Englund, which... Again, admittedly, I can't see anybody other than Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger. Do I suppose Jackie O'Haley as well, for more modern interpretations, but... Yeah, I don't know, David Warner, I think... I don't know, I think he could have done the job reasonably well. Like, I mean, the guy is actually a pretty incredible actor, and... In terms of his villainous roles, like, I mean, he does definitely have the chops for it, but... Hmm. Probably would have been a bit more of a sinister Freddy Krueger than, in fact, we're used to. Uh, but anyway, all that aside... Yeah, David Warner. Rest in peace, my good man. Uh, there we go. Oh, maybe you don't need to do a full combo, maybe it just takes a set amount of hits. Although I'm not too sure how many it takes, I thought you had to do a... I don't know. Whatever, uh, I don't know. I don't fight this boss fight enough to really know the ins and outs of it. So, uh... Oh, come on, just let us kill you! You fat-faced son of a bitch! I mean, I know this all came out very much after the fact, but I'm also kind of reminded of the, uh... <laughs> the Bob Barbus boss fight from DMC Devil May Cry. I mean, I never thought I'd say this, but uh, I do think the Bob Barbus boss fight in that game is actually a little bit more... Well, exciting, mainly because of the fact that Dante can attack him a little bit more than what Sora can to, you know, this thing where you basically have to use a reaction command to do it. I mean, again, it is climactic, but at the same time, though, you can't really get up in its face, and it's mainly just Sark getting the way going. Eh, I'll harm you. So, again, the boss fight is lackluster in a few places, but at the same time, not too bad. So, uh, enjoy, kids. I see Tron has a silly side, too. I learned it from you. Of course, I do have my silly limits. Okay, then I'll tweak your program when I get back to the user world. You? Maybe we better not try that. 
Aw, how about it, guys? Singing Tron? Dancing Tron. Sound good? <laughs> okay, okay, fine. But before I crash... Sora, Donald, Goofy, and all the users out there, thank you. You really helped me. You made me so much stronger. You taught me what friendship is truly all about. And I'll never forget it. As soon as I met you, I knew we were going to defeat the MCP and free the system. Isn't this what users do when they're sorry to say goodbye? Uh, it's a first for me. Gorse, Tron, it's like a promise that we'll see each other again real soon. Okay, well then. I promise. Where are you going?